Hello everyone, welcome to our Mixed Media Moods. So this is kind of a mixture here between November and December. Sorry about that, that's totally my fault, not Jen's. We ended up, uh, or I ended up sort of getting really carried away on some other projects, but I'm super excited to be back with you. Um, I am starting here with four, not four, two four inch by four inch panels, um, wooden panels. These come from Dick Blick and don't forget all the links will be below and uh, including links to Jen's blog. So, and Jen's awesome video it has so much beautiful texture on it. Um, uh, so I, anyways, I started with two four by four boards. And then I got out some Tim Holtz Distress Crackle. I hadn't used this before, but I did know that it was a clear crackle. And I really love these um, inspirational boards to sort of experiment and just have a really good time. So I spread some crackle out on these boards to see what would happen. And it is a beautiful clear crackle. Holy gorgeousness. It's awesome. Um, then I got out two colors of my alcohol inks from the Ranger Tim Holtz line and Adirondack alcohol inks. And those, those, um, numbers or numbers, goodness gracious, excuse me. Can you tell it's been a while since I did this? Um, those links will be at the bottom in the subject list or in, on the blog post as well. Um, so now I'm just kind of, I, spritzed on some of these alcohol inks and at first I was applying them with a felt piece, a piece of felt, but I didn't really like how it was going and it was looking kind of splotchy. So then I just started kind of sprinkling these alcohol inks on and, and keep in mind that alcohol inks are for non-porous surfaces. So I wanted to see how they would react between the wood and the gloss, not glossy, but the crackle that we had put down, that I had put down. So I didn't really know what was happening. That's kind of why I mentioned earlier, I really like to take these inspirational mood boards that Jen and I have put together and just experiment with them because it's really fun and it's giving me the opportunity to kind of like branch out. So I spritzed some of those alcohol inks on straight from the bottle and then I sprayed um, or kind of actually just poured some straight up alcohol right out of my bathroom onto these boards because it was still looking very splotchy and even here you can kind of see there are some like big kind of brown areas and that is because of the way I applied it. So I added some more um, alcohol and then I let that sit there and dry and after I came back I decided that I really wanted the crackle to pop some more. I wanted to have a much better view of the crackle and so to do that I used some gesso and kind of worked it down into the cracks and crevices that the crackle created and then keep in mind I only put the crackle sort of on the on the very center of these boards. So the whole thing is kind of a big fun experiment just to kind of see what I can get. So this whole portion here of the video, this is just about putting that gesso um, with a little bit of water and this is Liquitex gesso, putting the gesso down into the cracks of the crackle and then kind of wiping it off the surface and going back and forth, back and forth. This is what I like to refer to um, or what I like to refer yeah, what I like to refer to as the song and dance because it's always easier to put more on than it is to take more away. So if I can kind of do it in stages until I get to a desired result, I won't go overboard in the beginning and then be upset with the end pro with the end product. So you can see it does look a little bit repetitive. Um, I'm not using as much medium as you think simply because I have added some water to it. So it's spreading out quite a bit more than... Uh, than you would imagine. Back and forth, back and forth. And sometimes too, um, I will pause the video and step away for a second to kind of take a look and, and get a nice overview of what I'm working on, as well as to give some of the layers a chance to dry. So I know that every time I put that white down in the crackle and then I wipe it back up, it's still wet. So it's not going to stay down in there. But if I let it dry and start to kind of harden in there, it will. Um, I have a palette knife here and after I had kind of played with this cool, oh, and so the colors that I chose for the alcohol ink were from that gorgeous, um, big rusty spool that was in the mood board that Jen found. Was that thing not glorious? That's where I found most of my inspiration for this piece. Um, so now I am, after I have that kind of cool rusty, excuse me, colored background, I wanted to distress it even more. So I have wood, and then I have crackle, and then I have alcohol ink, and then I have alcohol, then I have some gesso and some water, 
And now I'm coming back in with gesso and really just scraping it along some of these textures that the natural wood has achieved as well as some of those layers that I've created from the crackle and the inks and things like that. So it's going to help kind of knock back um, the that kind of like in your face color but also I wasn't happy with all those splotches that I had ended up with. And I know, I know, and I'm telling you this, that comes directly from applying the alcohol ink to the wood because it soaks right into the wood. It doesn't have any room to move around. So keep that in mind. Um, but this is a way for me to sort of camouflage some of those big splotchy areas. Uh, it's just by scraping some gesso. And I will do some, area, some of the areas twice. So I dried it and then came back a second time. And the reason is because as the gesso dries, this Liquitex gesso is a little bit thin. As it dries, some of those colors peek through. And so in some of those areas, I really didn't want that to happen. So I did some more scraping. And then unintentionally, I kind of found where these two blocks almost meet together, like as if I had taken the gesso from one block to the next. So that's very cool. And here, I real quick, I just marked the top of each of my pieces because that I was really happy with how the pieces played together that way so I wanted to for sure mark which was the top and then I'll always know when I go to hang them on the wall or if I give them to somebody they'll kind of or if I sell these two pieces they'll kind of understand how they were intended um, this bundle of like little sticks here, I have the best husband in the world. So these are street sweeper blades that just come off the street sweepers as they're sweeping the streets. And uh, sometimes when William goes to pick up our kiddo at school, he'll just, we have to park about a block away from the school. And so he'll just pick them up as he walks on by. It's so exciting. So I have a really nice bundle here. And they're great for dyeing fabric, but also for using um, in mixed media. These strings that I'm playing with here now... Um, they are from some canvas. When I tear canvas, I really like to tear my fabrics. If this is your one of your first times visiting my YouTube channel or our mixed media moods, um, I always tear my fabric. I very rarely cut it with a pair of scissors. And so then I always have these kind of strings left over. Most fabrics, I just throw the strings away. But with canvas, they're so dense and thick, they make the most awesome little like bundles of stuff. So what I've done here is I've taken two of those street sweeper blades and I've kind of kept kept them in this um, sort of almost per, um, parallel line but but uh, at a bit of an angle so then if they continued on forever they would actually intersect um, but I but I took those threads from that canvas and wrapped it around two different areas of these street sweeper blades and it's doing two things. Like one, it's bringing back in some fibers and textures, which I felt was missing on this piece. And two, it's giving me a place to really secure these street sweeper blades to the boards. I could always like staple them on or glue them on or something like that, but because they're metal, I run the chance of it popping off eventually. But by wrapping them in a nice um, tight little bundle of fibers, I can then get out some golden medium gel medium and I can apply it to the back where the fibers are and then put it right down on the board and everything's going to soak together and sort of glue down into this awesome perfect little finished piece and it'll be really sturdy because it's it's really um, high-end golden gel medium and I made sure to really wrap those little street sweeper blades super super tight and then I knotted the canvas threads and it's canvas threads so we certainly know that they are um, up to par and very strong and sturdy. I'm just going to clamp that down make sure I have everything exactly where I want it because once the gel medium is dry it will be permanent I mean you could rip them up but you'll pull things up and there we are now they're dry and it is really great because I kind of played with these and moved stuff around um, you will notice that my work area is a little bit different now than it was before um, the video switched over and the reason is because I did this whole other process to um, a little piece of resin that I thought I was going to use and then I didn't end up liking. So what I'm playing with now is a mixture of golden, um, let's see, golden high flow, 
in teal. I just want to make sure I have the right name. I wish I had turned that bottle around. I will, oh yes, it is high flow. Okay, it's high flow acrylic in teal. And um, in the little cup, my little cup there, it has been mixed with glazing medium. And then I add a little bit of water to it. What I'm doing is splattering it onto my little wood blocks and then I'm heating it so that the outside of the splatter is dry. And then I'm wiping up the wet middle. Interestingly enough, the one on the right ended up with sort of this funny, like, faded tone around it. It's really interesting. I had not intended for that, but it's what they call a happy accident, and I'm super glad that it happened because it added in that really gorgeous blue that Jen has um, in our in our mood board. So I've pulled in some of the rust and the rusty colors. I am my canvas thread really really reminds me of the rope that's wrapped up there. Um, and then now I am playing with some more of those canvas threads and then this little chipboard piece from Unwell Studio. Who is our sponsor this month, by the way? So make sure you pay attention to the description and our blog post and then our Facebook group because we will have a prize from Unwell Studio for someone who participates in our challenge this month as well as a, um, a coupon for you to use on the Unwell Studio website. All right, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I have now gone, oh, I covered my chipboard house, by the way, from Unwell Studio. I covered that in a mixture of gesso and then fluid acrylic that's in this kind of funny gray color. Not funny, just in a fun gray color. Um, and then I used some gel medium to kind of glue down my fibers. And the thing about fibers is you can really soak them in medium and then kind of slap them down and they'll be super permanent. But they're not going to have that super fibrous feel to them because they'll be covered in a medium. So what I do is I put my fibers where I want them and then I just kind of easily lift them up and put some medium underneath. I pat it down and then I just kind of sort of tack it down in a couple areas. And then I put some gel medium down underneath my house and that's it. I'm done. So I really, really love how this piece turned out. Uh, well, it's like a duo, I should say. Um, and I, I intend for them to be hung this way. I will probably put these up for sale though. So of course, whoever purchases them can uh, hang them however they like. Thanks so much for joining us and we will see you next month. Bye.